I just wanted to take a real quick second and to show you a new command here, right? So we have Docker image LS that we saw, Docker PS to list running containers, Docker network LS to see networks. There's also Docker volumes. And so Docker volume LS will list created volumes. And we see I actually have a bunch here. Where do these come from? Some are based on me testing, and I could have cleared these out first to make it a little simpler, but some, specifically these ones with no name, are actually created when I've spun up a MySQL container. Because MySQL's image was created with a Docker file that defines, that tells it to create a volume. So this is the Docker file for MySQL 5.7. If I search for vol, we see volume var lib MySQL. And this is gonna tell Docker to create a volume and share it into the varlib mysql directory into the container. So it's a little confusing, but basically it just did docker volume create and it just um, let it auto generate a name. Let me spell that right. And it let it auto generate a name in this case. And this is where mysql's data is saved. So if I destroy my docker mysql container, it might look like my data is gone, right? So let's do docker ps, docker kill the mysql container. That container is gone, right? We can't get it back. So if I do docker volume ls, we have one less volume, right? That volume with the MySQL container is gone. It didn't get saved, which kind of sucks. And that sucks because our MySQL data is lost, right? So we can actually do docker volume create. And let's see, I think it's just a name. Yeah, I'm not gonna do anything except the default options. And I'll just name it my data. Great, and we can do docker run to our MySQL container here, and we could share it with a volume. So we can do the dash D flag again, and we're gonna say set the volume my data to var lib MySQL. So this is very much like this configuration in the Docker file, right? We're doing the dash V flag for volume, except we're saying use the volume that I named my data and share it into var lib MySQL in this container. All right, so that'll get created. Do Docker inspect the MySQL container. And we'll see inside of mounts here, we have a volume of name my data, right? So the volume got mounted to that container successfully. So let's see, I'm gonna do Docker exec once again, and we're gonna run PHP artisan migrate once again, because we destroyed the database and we just recreated it. So let's do this again to get that database back. So the database and that data now exists in our new MySQL container and has those tables and no users in it, right? Because I destroyed the data. So that user I created in the last video is gone now. That doesn't matter for this case. Let's just do Docker exec it and i'm going to do the mysql container i'm going to run mysql um here let's see just do mysql you root p with a command and that command is going to be uh use homestead and another sql query we're going to pass it is show tables let's see if this works okay i added enter in the password there and i could have put it in line but it still worked the prompt worked because i have the it flag here to make it interactive and we see we have those tables here right perfect so docker ps let's go and do docker kill the mysql container again and i'll do docker volume ls and my data still exists so now i can rerun this uh, MySQL container again, right? I'm creating a totally new container, totally new instance of MySQL, but I'm reconnecting it to the my data volume. Great. Now I can do Docker exec to the MySQL container that we just recreated, totally new container, new MySQL, but sharing the my data volume again. And I'll run that, those two things again, and we can see the table still exists. The data still exists in that database. And this command not found roots because I forgot to delete the word root after this. So I just, that's just a thing I should have deleted. But either way, this worked, right? The my app volume still contains my data and I can reuse that and I can attach it to other containers at runtime. So that's a little bit about volumes. We'll see that also in the next section where we talk about Docker Compose.